Right, welcome back to uh, part 4 yeah, of this chapter 13. Okay, so uh, we were looking at uh, this, yeah, uh, for example. Okay, uh, if the expected return for stock C is 17, yeah, which is higher yeah, the, uh, than the required return, then investors will buy stock C because C is underpriced. Yeah? And buying C, buying the stock C will raise the demand for C. This will raise the price of C. Yeah? When the price goes up, yeah, just now it was underpriced, but now the demand, the increased demand for C will raise the price. And this price increase yeah, will reduce the expected return. Yeah? Which was 17, now it will go down. Yeah? Because the price has gone up, the uh, expected return yeah, will go down. This is just like the present value and the interest rates, yeah, the discount rate. Higher the discount rate, okay, lower the value, yeah, the price. So when the price goes up, the value goes up, the interest rates go down. Yeah, the interest rate or the discount rate goes down. Yeah. So this reduces the expected return of stock C until yeah, the expected return is equal to the required return. When that happens, then stock C is value priced. So if the expected return is high, then it will go down yeah, due to price adjustments. Okay. So if it is high, then this would go down by the price increasing. Yeah? The price will increase and this will go down. The expected return will go down. Now, if it's the other way around, yeah, let's say the expected return for stocks is 14%, which is lower than the required return. Then investors who already own the stock C will sell yeah, because the stock is overpriced. It is overpriced. Yeah? If the required return is higher than the expected return, the expected return is too low, it means that the stock is overpriced yeah, or overvalued. Okay, overvalued, overpriced means the same thing. Yeah? I prefer the term uh, priced, underpriced, overpriced. Yeah? Because I see that value is something which is intrinsic. You cannot overvalue something. Yeah? But you can overprice something or underprice something. Okay, that is the perspective that I take. Yeah? Therefore, in this case, uh, it is overpriced. When it's low price, people will sell. This selling pressure will increase the supply of stock C, yeah? and this will reduce the price. Okay, when people will sell stock C, the, the supply will be greater than the demand. This will in, uh, reduce the price of C, and when the price falls, then this will raise the expected return. Okay, the expected return will go up until the expected return is equal to the required return. Then C will be value priced at equilibrium. Yeah? So this is an important point to understand how the price pricing mechanism works. Yeah? Uh, it changes until the expected return is equal to the required return. Alright, so this uh, diagram is the diagram of the security market line which we have seen earlier and then we come to the end of this uh, chapter. Yeah? We do a quick review how do you compute the expected return and standard deviation for an individual asset? Okay, we have uh, shown that at the beginning of this chapter. Yeah? This is based on the probability distribution. Yeah? Expected return, there is a formula for that. Uh, for standard deviation, you compute the variance first and then you compute the standard deviation. Yeah? The square root of variance is the standard deviation of return. For a portfolio, you do the same thing, the same manner. Uh, the additional advantage or the additional uh, variant formula, a yeah, different formula that you can use for a portfolio is the expected return for a portfolio. You can use the expected return of assets, yeah, the individual assets in the portfolio. You can use the weighted average yeah, to get the uh, expected return for the portfolio. But the standard deviation and the expected return for a portfolio will be computed using the same manner as for individual assets. Okay, so what is the difference between systematic risk and unsystematic risk? Systematic risk is risk that you cannot eliminate through diversification. Okay, and unsystematic risk is risk uh, that you can eliminate through diversification. As simple as that, yeah? What type of risk is relevant for determining the expected return or the required return? 
Of course, it is systematic risk because this can be eliminated through diversification at almost no cost. Okay, uh, this unsystematic risk requires no compensation, yeah? no need to reward for assuming unsystematic risk because this can be diversified. Yeah? Okay, but for systematic risk, no matter how much you diversify, this does not go down. Yeah? You cannot eliminate this. Therefore, uh, investors need to be compensated for this. Yeah, so only systematic risk is relevant. Unsystematic risk is not relevant yeah, for determining the required rate of return. Now, consider an example with a beta of 1.2, a risk free rate of 5%, and a market return of 13%. What is the reward to risk ratio? Reward to risk ratio will always be the market return minus the risk free rate. That will be the reward to risk ratio, yeah, because market is 13 minus 5 that would be the market risk premium divided by the market risk will be beta is equals to 1 yeah? therefore 13 minus 5 is 8 percent divided by 1 it will always be 8 percent yeah what is the expected return on the asset which asset this asset that has a beta of 1.2 you can apply the formula okay yeah the formula uh, formula for this is 5% RF plus 13 minus 5% multiplied by 1.2. Yeah? It's an application of the capital asset pricing model. Yeah? This you can also show use, uh, using Excel. Yeah? I'm going to show you that now. All right, and you can see it here. Okay, the reward to risk ratio is uh, 8%. We have done that here. You can hide this for the moment. Yeah? We don't need this. Right, so for part B, yeah, the asset required return will be this, yeah, B2, you can see the formula here, B2, which is the risk-free rate, plus uh, B3 minus B2, yeah, 13 minus 5, which is 8, multiplied by B4, yeah, which is 1.2, yeah, therefore, you get this value, yeah, which is... 14.6% is the assets required return based on CAPM. Yeah? Alright, now we move back to the slides. Okay, yeah, we move back to the slides. Okay, the last part looks at the, let me just shift it to the center here. The comprehensive problem. We are given the risk free rate, which is 4%, and the required return on the market is. 12%. What is the required return on an asset with a beta of 1.5? Yeah? Now, if it is 1.5, you are given RF, you are also given RM, so you need to determine the required return on this asset. Okay, therefore, you just apply the CAPM formula, which is 4% plus 12 minus 4, which is 8. Yeah? 8 multiplied by 1.5. Yeah? So, this is the Okay, this, these are the information given, right? Then beta is 1.5, therefore you apply the formula here, 4% plus 12 minus 4 multiplied by 1.5, you get 16%. That is the required return yeah, on that asset. What is the reward to risk ratio? Reward to risk ratio is always 8%, 12 minus 4 yeah, here. 12 minus 4 divided by BM or the beta for the market is always 1. So 12 minus 4 divided by 1 is 8%. Here, and 12% minus 4%. Now what is the required return on a portfolio consisting 40% of the asset above, this asset here, and the rest in an asset with an average amount of systematic risk. Okay, so here they ask you to compute the required return. Yeah? Okay, so here you need to first know what is the beta yeah, for these two stocks. Yeah? The first stock, the beta is given. Now, this is 1.5. So for an asset with an average amount of systematic risk means what? The systematic risk must be 1. Yeah? It must be 1. So first you compute the beta. So 0.4 multiplied by 1.5 because 40% of your investment will be in stock A. Yeah? 
and the remainder 60% these are the rates this is the portfolio rate and eh? 60% will be invested in stock that has a beta of 1 and eh? therefore the beta of the portfolio is 1.2 now you know the beta for the portfolio you can use that to compute the uh, required return yeah, for the portfolio okay use the CAPM formula RF is 4% plus 12 minus 4% 8% multiplied by 1.2 here yeah all right this then you plus with 4 you get 13.6% yeah so this is the answer all right with that we finish this topic and uh, uh, in class on uh, Wednesday yeah we will be looking into a new chapter. Alright, that's all for today. Thank you.